Hey, what's up? John Sanmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So I got a nice, easy question for you today that is actually about software development. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about girls. I'm not gonna talk about, oh, computers. Uh, computers is about software development, but I'm not gonna talk about philosophy or life. We're gonna talk about the career. <laughs> software development. What is the future? What about the future of software development? What is the future of software development? Real short question here. So, question is, what are your thoughts on the demand for software developers? Some say there is a shortage. Some there say there are too many flooding the market. So, this is an interesting thing because I've observed this, right? I mean, I think most of you have observed this and you're either on one end of this or the other, right? You're either the guy right now watching the video and you're like, what the hell? I can't get a job. Why can't I get a job? Right? There, there's, I don't understand. There is like, there's no jobs. Like there's all these companies say that they want developers, but why won't they hire me? I can't seem to find a job. It's like crazy. Or you're on the other side and you're like, oh, it's a good time to be a software developer right now. I'm in this job, but I'm thinking I should, I should move on to it. I've been getting offers all the time and I want to move on to another job. Maybe I could get paid more. Maybe I shouldn't be staying in this job, right? You either fall into one of these two categories. And how do I know this? Because I get a lot of emails from you and, and I know that some of you are so successful and you're like, you're turning down job offers and the, the other group of you just can't get your foot in the door and you don't understand. And so there's this real interesting dilemma here where companies are saying we can't hire software developers fast enough. We can't find developers to fill our positions and you know, we have a problem, right? And then on the other hand, developers are saying, wait a minute, hold on. <clears throat> Hello, I'm right here, dude. I know C Sharp. I have written four Android applications that are in the app store. You can check out my blog and my portfolio. You said you need software developers. Here I am, dude. What is going on, right? So what, what is going on? Why is this happening? What is this perception and is this real? So first of all, I don't think it's one way or the other. I think this is a real perception on both sides. I think it is true that companies cannot find software developers to fill their positions. They're having a hard time doing this. And I also think that there's a lot of software developers that are getting into the, into the field or, or are older. Okay. Cause we, we've had, you know, I did a video on what happens to older programmers and uh, I've done several of them because a lot of people are claiming age discrimination, right? So I think both of those categories, younger and older, right? Are, feel like they can't get jobs and that there's no jobs out there and what the heck is going on. So let me kind of break this down and tell you what is going on here. At least my opinion of it. So what I think is happening is that the thing is that there's this, this whole idea of this, this 10 X rule of, of like a really good software developer can do 10 times the work or be 10 times effective as a, as a poor developer. In fact, I think it's actually more than that. Some people say, no, no, that's crazy. No, it's not crazy. Uh, in fact, if you hire wrong as a, if you hire a bad software developer, you are going, they're going to be a negative effect on your team. They will actually cost you money. It will actually be a net, a net negative benefit. They're actually negative, right? And if you hire a really good developer, they, they could be better than 10. It could be like you've hired 10 developers. You could get that much effectiveness, right? So companies don't want to hire negative <laughs> and they realize this and they realize that most developers out there are crap, right? And if you don't believe me, you know, just, just look at you know, this uh, back a while ago. I've talked about this a lot that one of the shocking things, a lot of bloggers, you know, I think, you know, Jeff Atwood from coding horror blog about this kind of made this topic popular of FizzBuzz, right? Is it basically, all these developers, and you can look it up, I'm not gonna go into details of FizzBuzz, but essentially at interviews, a lot of companies were doing this FizzBuzz test, even when it was known, and developers couldn't write the simple application, the simple program to, you know, what was it, like every fifth to count, and every fifth word it would say Fizz, and then on the 10th word it'd be Buzz, and on the 15th word it'd be FizzBuzz, right? Or something like that. I don't even remember what the exact thing is, but it's a simple problem, right? And so this was a scare, I think, and you know, and I think what's, what's happening, what you're seeing is that a lot of, 
a lot of companies that are trying to hire software developers, they want the best. They want really good developers. They don't want to take a risk. Like, you know, coming from the other side now, as an entrepreneur, as someone who hires developers with my own money <laughs> or hires people to work for me, I do not want to make a mistake in hiring someone for a job, right? I want to make sure that they're good. So, so the biggest risk I think that, that you have as an employer hiring a software developer is that they can't actually code. It becomes a real big liability because you're not going to find out for a while and they might be able to pass the interview and pretend like they can code, but then they're going to screw up your code base and you're going to have a huge problem. By the time you've discovered this, you've, you've been down one person who's actually been destroying your code base and, and taking up space and you've lost time. And, and so there, there's a huge, huge fear and danger, right? So you've got to demonstrate the ability to be able to, to code and to be competent in the environment and that you're actually going to be a net benefit to the team. And so what I think is happening is honestly, a lot of companies are looking for these top developers. And what it is, is see, there's no shortage of developers, but there is a shortage of top developers that have the experience and the reputation to back it up. Right. And that's where some of you have the ability, right? But you don't have the experience and you don't have the reputation. And again, this is why I stress so much on the power of marketing yourself as a software developer. Right? Again, you can check out my course on how to market yourself as a software developer. I didn't mean for this to be a plug for it, but check that out. And that's why I created the course. It was the first course I created uh, for simple programming. That's why. Or you can just sign up for my blogging course. We'll put that one here. And, and you can get started creating a blog. And the reason why that's so important is because that's going to get you some of the reputation and the credibility, right? If you have a blog, if you've been maintaining it, if you can build some kind of authority in your niche, in your subject area, that's going to go a long way because now you're going to, now you're not going to be a, a, a risk, right? You're going to be a safe bet for a company that wants to hire you because they're going to say, okay, well, this person, they've got a blog, they've got a portfolio, they might not have a huge amount of experience. You know, maybe if you do, it's going to be beneficial, but they know that you know your stuff, right? And again, I talk about not coming in the front door. We're not going to talk about that here, but so that's really what's going on in my mind is that these companies, they're looking for top notch developers. And so there's not as many of those. There's a lot more new developers, right? And this is where, you know, sorry, you old developers, but I'm going to, I'm going to be blunt with you, right? You need to get your skills up, right? It's, you're not being age discriminated against. It's not, it's not true because hell, I would love to hire. I mean, there's no better hire than someone that's got like 30 years of experience and knows their shit, right? And is up to date on the new technologies that can school the, those young kids and tell them how to actually build software. That's the best, you know, old cranky mentor. I want to hire a bunch of those and get those, you know, get those young whippersnappers, you know, working and understanding the power of hard work. But the problem is you still are, you know, you're still ASP. <laughs> you're not even ASP.net or you're doing COBOL or, you know, or you just know you're, you see, and you haven't, you don't know the react.js and, and angular two is released and you don't know any of that stuff. The new stuff, you know, you think, you think node is, is like a, a physical deformity <laughs> or like a, a skin, skin disease. You don't, you don't know the, the new stuff, right? So that's why you're kind of being quote discriminated against. You need to get your skills up. Okay. And, and you need to update your resume, if, you know, that double space, single mono space font. That's no good. <laughs> you get to hire a professional and get, get, get up to date here. Look like, you know, what's going on in technology today, right? That's, that's the thing. You don't want to look dated, right? Update that, that headshot too, you know, 20 years ago, headshot, no good. That doesn't work on your LinkedIn profile. It makes you look old. Like, like, and when I say old, like you don't know what you're doing anymore. Like you didn't keep up, right? You can, you can be old, but look new, right? You can be sharp. You can be the guy that knows all this stuff. So anyway, I don't want to go off too much onto that, but this is what's going on. So if you want my honest, you know, evaluation of this, I'm telling you, this is what's going on is that you have companies that are, are basically in, there's a shortage of really good developers. And there always is going to be because there's more people coming into the field than, and then there's people exiting the field, right? So there's a very small, it's a triangle, right? It's a pyramid here. And at the top is experienced developers that are actually really 
good, okay? And there's not very many of those. And at the bottom is brand new developers and old developers that didn't keep up with the craft. There's a ton of those, okay? And and no one wants to hire those because they want the, the so so you have to do your job if you are fall into the bottom of the of the of the pyramid to kind of move yourself up or to make it appear that you're on that level, right? Like I said, I give you some techniques. I'm not going to go into that. I, I want to talk more about this video about what's going on rather than the solutions, but I've given you some solutions and one of the big ones is to market yourself. This is why it's so important, right? Because that is a way to overcome that disadvantage and to get your foot in the door. And I talk about this plenty of times in my courses and, and on my blog posts and on videos here, you know, check out the channel and you'll, you'll hear plenty of ways to, to market yourself, to build a brand, to be able to build a reputation, to get your foot in the door and especially when you're first starting out. So, and to build a portfolio, all these things can, can really help you. But that's what's going on. This is why the perception is there. And you know, I don't see that changing. And so where's the future going with this? It's only gonna become more so because to become a top-notch developer, you're gonna to need to know more and more stuff and you're gonna to have to have more experience because technology is changing so rapidly and you're gonna to have to prove yourself and there's gonna be more and more people coming into this field, more and more programmers every year. So you're gonna to have to, the competition is gonna be greater at the bottom. Right, so you want to move up. You want to get your foot in the door. This is why. Hey, if you gotta like do what you gotta do to get your foot in the door. Once you get some experience under your belt, then you can you can go. You can fly, and it won't be hard. Because and in, in, again, ask an experienced developer. Right, if you don't believe me, it, like I said, there's two categories of, of of you that are watching this in general. Experienced developers, you're like this. There's no better time alive to be a developer. They're paying me crazy amounts of salary, and I'm turning down job offers left and right. And if you're not an experienced developer, it's a famine. You're like, what the hell's going on? So here you go. That's it. You know, it's up to you to figure out how to how to solve this problem. Like I said, I've given you some hints. Uh, one thing that you can do is you can subscribe. You can click here, and then you can listen to me coaching you. You know, every day, every day, a couple of videos. You know, get get some of the psychology, get some of this under your belt. Just click the subscribe button, and uh, you'll be part of the community. All right, I'll talk to you next time. Take care.